I want you to observe that there are four pits, two peaks, and five passes. I'm going to fill that basin with water, starting from the very bottom and filling it gradually. The most important thing to observe is the number of lakes and the number of shorelines. These numbers won't change at all so long as the water doesn't flood a critical point. The lakes will get a little larger, but the number of lakes will remain the same and the number of shorelines will remain the same. You will observe first the formation of four lakes covering the four pits. Then these lakes will begin to join, and they will join flooding the saddle points. There were two kinds of junctions. A lake can join itself, or it can join another lake. The first junctions here are junctions of a lake with another lake. When you have such a junction, the number of lakes decreases by one, and the number of shorelines decreases by one. And after all this has been accomplished, now this horseshoe lake joins itself. It causes the number of boundaries, shorelines, to increase by one. The horseshoe is one lake, and now we have a ring lake. Now this ring lake joins itself again uh, towards the middle. In making this junction, another shoreline is formed. So we now have, all told, three shorelines. From the resultant lake, there are two peaks. As the water rises, uh, the lower peak is flooded, and you lose thereby a shoreline. The higher peak is flooded, and you lose thereby a shoreline. Now you've ended up with a whole basin covered, one lake and one shoreline.